uh, equity to the meek of it. In other words, the Lord's going to be fat. Go ahead and read on. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, uh -huh. and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Go ahead. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, uh -huh. and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Now that is what he's going to do at his coming. And if you read Revelation 19 chapter, it will tell you that. But skip down to uh, verse 10 and continue reading. Go ahead and read. And in that day. And in, a, and in that day. In what day? In the day that he returned. In the day when the wolf and the lamb and all of that stuff dwell together. In that day. Go ahead and read. There shall be a root of Jesse. There will be a root of Jesse. So now who is this root of Jesse? He's the same one that is the branch of Jesse. Mm -hmm. And as we read in the 22nd chapter of Revelation, David, the root, uh, Jesus brother, the root and the offspring of David. So that means that he's both the root and the offspring of Jesse as well. Mm -hmm. So Jesse is David's dad. Go ahead and continue reading. We shall stand for an ensign of the people. Now he's going to stand for the ensign of the people and show you who else going to seek out. This ain't just about Israel. This is about everybody because this shepherd, he's going to give eternal life to everybody that seek after him. Go ahead and read on. To it shall the Gentiles seek. And, and he said to it, even the Gentiles is going to seek. Read some more. And his rest shall be glorious. And his, what is rest? What is this rest that will be glorious? It is a thousand years that he is going to establish his kingdom on the earth. Mm -hmm. And that is what this Sabbath day is really pointing to. You know, every Sabbath day when you show up to have a holy convocation, you are reminded that in the 7,000 year since the creation of man, uh, uh, that, that God is going to have a day of rest when he is going to establish his kingdom on this earth. And during that thousand years, there will be peace. And there will not be peace until then. Because he said the nations will not hurt, or uh, they will not learn war anymore. In fact, let's read that. Let's back up and read that. Let's uh, 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 back up and read verse 9, then we'll get back to where we were reading. Go ahead and read. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. And they will not hurt or destroy in all his holy mountain. When is this? During that day of rest. Mm -hmm. He said a nation not going to lift up sword against nation, neither will they learn war anymore. Mm -hmm. The nation will not hurt or destroy in all of his holy mountain. Go ahead and read on. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And, and at that time, we know this is future, right? Because the, 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 the earth is not, not uh, full of the knowledge of the Lord today, is it? Nope. How do I know that? Because if you listen to what they are saying, they are saying everything contrary to the knowledge of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So this is yet future. And in that day, you know, uh, they're not going to hurt or destroy in all this holy mountain. And you know that's future, too. Because all you see nowadays is hurt and destruction. Everywhere you look, it is hurt and destruction. Whether local, national, or international, there is hurt and destruction. He said, but in this day, the, uh, there will be no more hurt and destruction. Go ahead and read verse 10. Go ahead. And in that day, uh, and in, in that day, go ahead and read. There shall be a root of Jesse, go ahead. which shall stand for an ensign of the people. Go ahead. To it shall the Gentiles see, uh -huh. and his rest shall be glorious. And his rest shall be glorious. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass in that day uh -huh. that the Lord shall set his hand again a second time to recover the remnant of his people. Now it's going to come to pass in that day that the Lord is going to set his hand a second. In that day now. Mm -hmm. You know, when the wolf and the lamb play together, in that day, that's when he's going to set his hand again a second time to recover the remnant of his people. In that day, he is going to do that. Go ahead and read on. We shall be left from Assyria uh -huh. and from Egypt and from Patro and from and from Cush uh -huh. and from Elam and from Sana uh -huh. and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. Now in that day he gonna set his hand again the second time. What was the first time when he brought them out of Egypt? When mm -hmm. is the second time when he gathered them out of all nations way in there? Been, you need to go and read what Jesus said in the twenty-first chapter of Luke that Israel would be scattered into all nations into bondage until the time of the Gentile people. Israel have not been gathered yet, people, right. because the time of the Gentiles have not ended yet. Right. When will the time of the Gentiles end? In that day that he's going to gather them the second time, in that day of rest. Go ahead and continue reading. And he shall set up an ensign for the nation and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. Now he's going to set up an ensign for the nation and he will assemble the outcast of Israel. Go ahead and read. And gathers together the, the disperse of Judah from the four corners of the earth. That's where they have been scattered to, and in that day they will be gathered. Now he said, in that day I'm going to gather the outcast of Israel. 
Let's go to Isaiah chapter 56. We almost there. You got one more after this. Isaiah chapter 56. And we'll begin read at verse 1. Isaiah 56 and verse 1. 56 and verse 1. He's going to tell you something else here. He's going to let you know even the strength. If they expect to get salvation, then they're going to have to keep the Sabbath just like he said for Israel to do. Right. Well, you know, everybody don't want to make the Sabbath day be for the Jews. Well, the Lord then never said it is the Sabbath for the Jews. He didn't say it is the Sabbath of the Lord in all of your dwellings. Mm -hmm. And that's whose Sabbath day it is. And the same thing that Israel have to do, that's the same thing that everybody else have to do. Start reading at Isaiah 56 and begin at verse 1. Go ahead and read. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, it said. Go ahead and read. Keep ye judgment and do justice, uh -huh. for my salvation is near to come, Go ahead. and my righteousness to be revealed. But if the Lord said, my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Go ahead and read. Blessed is the man that doeth this, uh -huh. and the son of man that lay hold on it. Now he said, blessed is the man. He didn't say the Israelite, did he? Mm -hmm. But blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that lay hold on it. Go ahead and read. That keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. That will keep the Sabbath from polluting it. Go ahead, read. And keepeth his hand from doing any and evil. And that will keep his hand from doing any. This ain't just for him. It's for everybody. Everybody got to keep the Sabbath from polluting it and keep their hand from doing any evil. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, then the Lord will bring you to his holy mouth. To that day of rest. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, continue, read. Neither let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord speak, saying. Wait a minute. He said, don't let the son of the stranger that have joined himself to the Lord, speak, saying. Go ahead, read. The Lord have utterly separated me from his people. Go ahead. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. Because, you know, some have tried to separate the stranger from the, uh, the Lord's people. But he said, Don't let him speak, saying that, that the Lord have separated me from his people. Skip down to uh, verse 6. Go ahead, read. Also the son of the stranger uh -huh. that joined themselves to the Lord. Wait a minute, the son of the stranger that will join themselves to the Lord. To do what? To serve him. To serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, read. And to love the name of the Lord. And to love the name of the Lord. Go ahead. To be his servant. To be his servant. Go ahead. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. And do what else? And take a hold of my covenant. And what is that covenant? That covenant is the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. That he will serve the Lord to be his servant that will keep the Sabbath from polluting it and take a hold to the Lord's covenant. If he does that, go ahead and read. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain. Now he said if they do that, then I will bring them to my holy mountain. Cause, you know, Israel know they have to do it. That's a foregone conclusion. But what many people don't understand is, is that the stranger have to do it as well. Now I understand when you get over in the New Testament and Paul showed up at the synagogue to preach to the people. Who did you have sitting up in there? You had the strangers sitting up in there. Why were they sitting up in there? Because they understood what the scripture said. They understood that if they want to uh, uh, be a part of the Lord's kingdom, that they too had to keep the Sabbath day from polluting it and take hold to the Lord's covenant. You're going to tell this is what I ain't never understood. You know, part of the uh, covenant, the covenant really is based on the Ten Commandments. What you're saying is when you said the, uh, the Gentiles don't have to keep the commandments, that the law is for Israel, what you're saying is, you know, Israel, they can't uh, lie, steal, or commit adultery or none of that stuff. Or otherwise, they're going to get in trouble. But because you happen to be born a stranger, you can do all of that stuff, and you ain't going to get in no trouble. Where's the fairness at in that? You understand what I'm saying? God is a just God, isn't he? You know, if he's going to throw me in the fire for doing something, that means he's going to throw the Gentile in the fire for doing the same thing. You understand? You're going to tell me, because he's a Gentile, he ain't got to keep no law. He can do anything. He can steal whatever he want to, commit adultery whenever he want to, and God ain't going to do nothing to him. But if I do any of that stuff because I happen to be born an Israelite, I'm going in the fire. That don't make no sense at all. None of that stuff. If you listen to these people sometimes, if you listen to them, none of that stuff don't make no sense at all. Then why did the Lord say in the very last chapter in the Bible that, you know, the lies and the murderers and the adulterers and all those people, why do you say he's going to throw them in the fire? If they ain't got to keep it, what you going to throw me in the fire for? You say I ain't got to keep no law, so I can do all that stuff if I want to. Now, why you going to throw me in the fire for? Because I did. You understand what I'm saying? None of that stuff they said makes no sense at all. In the face of scripture. But nevertheless, that is what they tell you. But the Lord is making it clear right here 
you know, to strangers. If he 